Hello. In the first video of how to save, load and write basic programs on different vintage computers, which is about the C64, I mentioned briefly that the Commodore disk drive has its own CPU and memory, which you can program. This video is not about reading and writing files in assembly, but putting a program in the memory of the disk drive and executing it directly on the disk drive CPU. Don't expect a fancy program, it's just a proof of concept. Let's have a quick view on the specs of the drive. The CPU is a 6502, which is programmatically the same as a 6510 in the C64. The main difference is that the 6510 has an 8-bit general purpose I.O. port integrated. Uh, for the memory we have 2K of RAM, which isn't too bad. Here we have the memory map. There are four data buffers from 0 to 3 and 4 is wrong. It's three. 0 to 3 and I will use buffer 0 for data which starts from 300 to 300FF and for the machine code I will use buffer 1 starting from 400. Let's switch to the example. If you're not familiar with the file handling commands on the C64, please feel free to watch my introduction video before this one. You can find the link in the info box below the video. Let's load the directory of the disk. and load the program memwrite. OK, I will enter 8 values, 8 numbers, and below 256. Okay, here we have entered the values, and here we are reading them back from memory. But not the memory from the computer, but from the memory of um, the disk drive. Let's have a look at the source code. Opening in channel mode, inputting the value eight times, here's the loop and writing it to this memory address. MW means memory write, number of bytes and uh, means number of bytes one and the value. And we are repeating this eight times. And then we are fetching the result memory read from this address the value and printing the value the address is low byte high byte that means high byte three times 256 you're getting 668 which is equal to hexadecimal 300. That's buffer zero. Let's reboot the computer. And fetching the first value of buffer zero. memory read low byte 0 high byte 3 
fetching value. It should be 33, if I remember right. Yep. So let's load the mem right again. And enabling these two lines. So this line means the floppy drive should load the value from drive zero, track run, sector zero, to, this is a file descriptor five and file descriptor five is uh, pound sign one that means um, data buffer one and after it has loaded it to data buffer one it will execute it block execute let's have a look just enter some values here. And so what happened here? He has executed the program and the program was just adding five to every value. I show you the program block right. And here we are doing a block allocation. What is a block allocation? The disk is organized in tracks. In the case of the Commodore format, the tracks are from 1 to 35. The track 18 is a directory, but the catalog is not limited to track 18. For um, every track is divided into blocks, also called sectors. For the disk drive 1541, the size of a block is always 256 bytes. The number of blocks is not the same for every track. When you have a look here, track number 1 to 17, there's a total of 21 blocks. And from track number 31 to 35, there are only 17 um, blocks. This is due to the less um, room space towards the center of the disk. When you save a file, the file is written in one or more blocks. That means if your file is only 10 bytes long, it will use a whole block. You lose 246 bytes. If the file is 700 bytes big, it will use three blocks and you lose 68 bytes in the last block. The file name and the used track or tracks and sector numbers are then saved in the directory. To make sure that these blocks are not overridden and that you can locate the file again. The Commodore floppy disk provides a function to allocate a block, registering it in the directory but without a file name. That's what I did in the code. Here is a block allocation. Drive 0, track 1, and block or sector 0. Here I was checking the results of the block allocation to check if the block was free or not. 
and with the command u1, the command u1 loads a block to a memory buffer. The memory buffer is specified here in file descriptor tool, and it's just uh, the system chooses a memory buffer because I, I didn't put a number behind the pound sign. Here's drive 0, track 1, and block 0. So the block 0 from track 1 is loaded to the memory buffer. Then I position the pointer to the beginning of the buffer with the address 0 here. And I'm reading the data code here. Here's the extra, extra machine code. And it will write it in the buffer. And after that, U2 is writing the buffer back to track 1, block 0. So, I know that this 5 is actually the value which is added to every number. So, let's change it and make 10. Running the program. And loading the memwrite program. Um, there's still oops, the RAM here. I have to remove the marks. Let's try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he has added ten now instead of five. Maybe you have noticed that after the message reading from memory appeared, it took a while after the numbers were printed. That's the time the floppy CPU needed to start the drive, locates track 1, sector 0, and load it into buffer 1, and executes the program. Only after it has finished the program, it will respond to the next user request. The computer is actually waiting for an answer. So if you plan to write a CPU-intensive task on the floppy, it's not a good idea to ask for the status. Otherwise, your computer will hang until response from the floppy arrives. Well, at least for the used system floppy routines. Um, a quick overview. So here we are specifying buffer 1. And block execute in buffer 1. This is the assembler code. Um, let me get rid of the line numbers here. They're confusing. So, um, this will not be an introduction to the 6502 programming, but I try to explain the code. What you see here is a listing output after assembling the source code. The source code is only this part here. That's a source code. The first column is a memory address and the next one two, one or two hex values are the actual machine code which corresponds to the data decimal values in the block write program. The 6502 has a 16-bit address bus, but it has not a 16-bit register, nor can you pair to register to obtain 16-bit, but you can use the memory between 0 and FF, called page 0, as a replacement for a 16-bit register. This is the page 0, which goes from 0 to FF, 
as you can see the page is of course used by the floppy drive operating system after dumping a few times this memory area I suppose um, that the address 00B4 and 00B5 are not used but to be sure I save them to the stack here push accumulator and uh, restore them back before quitting uh, the program the characteristic of the page zero is that you can access this area with an 8-bit instead of a 16-bit address here's the command load accumulator and you specify only b4 not 00 b4 well uh, it would be a5 b4 0 0 because uh, the 6502 is a um, low byte order cpu here in the loop we are clearing the carry flag because the 6502 uh, has only one uh, add command add with carry there's no add without carry um, here we are loading the accumulator with the number 5 and this construct is uh, most difficult to explain actually you would you could write it this way then adding so it's adding the value which is in under the memory address 300 to the accumulator then you have to write 300 one two three four and so on and this is not uh, very usable in a loop okay what have we saved under b4 before there's zero zero and b5 is the zero tree so low byte high byte order the address is zero tree 100 then it adds y to it and y is zero so it actually loads the value from the address 300 to the accumulator after that it increments y so the next add will be from 301 and so on and it stops here after y is 8 this was probably too much input for one video but i hope you found it interesting thank you for watching and have a nice day bye bye